The UK could be on a fast track for the legalisation of licensed cannabis for medical prescriptions. Health Secretary Matt Hancock says he wants to see licences approved on overseas evidence rather than the UK undertaking its own lengthy trials. In Canada, meanwhile, not only is the uh, medical profession able to prescribe cannabis-based products, but from October last year, the Canadian government allowed the recreational use of cannabis widely across the country. A recent article, meanwhile, in the Evening Standard here in London quoted a poll suggesting that 63% of us Londoners think that recreational cannabis should be legalised. Well, let's talk now to a cannabis company operator and investor who, through his company, Cancrest, is currently building and acquiring a cannabis company in London, including one of the largest databases of cannabis customers in the UK and a CBD business focusing in on the fast-moving consumer goods sector. Dave Gibson is CEO of Cancrest. Dave, welcome. Thanks, Jeremy. It's a pleasure talking to you. We met at an event here in London just a short while ago. We had a lot of people uh, talking about this uh, new and exciting sector for us here in the UK. Of course, you Canadians have been through it before. I know you do a lot more in the sector other than what we just outlined. But how are you approaching, as an investor, how are you approaching the UK market? Um, well, I guess the first thing is the cannabis market goes at the speed of light. So it's important to have speed and focus. Um, I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of companies in the past and it seems like in the cannabis industry, it's six to 12 months in the cannabis industry is worth three to five years in any other industry. It's going fast. Um, the second thing is there are a lot of shiny objects out there to look at and invest in. Um, so um, doing, you know, and, 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 and I guess, you know, out of 50 uh, investor uh, proposals that I've seen. 40 of those are probably a plan on a page, a good idea. Um, five of those are, you know, a mom and pa operation without adequate experience to really scale an organization. Um, out of, and the remaining five are actually legitimate businesses um, that have a little bit of revenue, that have um, some customers, that have some contracts. Um, their supply chain is, 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 is getting there. Um, so I guess focus is really important. Yeah, you are British Canadian. I know you've been over here in, in, in the UK for, for a while now, but having seen what's happened in Canada over what I believe is pretty much a 20-year period from the point at which I think pretty much where the UK is at the moment to this uh, legalising the recreational use last October, November time. Do you foresee it taking a lot less time here in the UK? We already heard from Matt Hancock, the uh, health secretary, saying he wants to fast track some aspects of bringing the cannabis uh, market closer to those that need it for prescription purposes. Yeah, I guess that's a two-prong answer. First off, um, the medicinal route. Um, well, uh, you know, as, as one of the first movers in, in the UK market in the cannabis space, just because I was privileged enough to also um, invest and help operate in the Canadian space, we were really surprised how quickly it became medicinally legal here. Um, you know, I think it seems like the UK government reacts when there's a groundswell. Um, that was for the medicinal side. For the re recreational so side, it's, we're, we're, we're in a privileged position again in the UK because we're seeing other markets around the world do well at it. Um, the Canadian government has done a fantastic job, you know, um, splitting it up between the provincial part of it and the federal part of it and working really well together. Um, the USA, although balkanized and still state by state, they're still doing a good job. And we're seeing other countries come online. So I think once um, we see the, the coffers start to get filled up in the other countries um, and, and, and start to see that it can actually be regulated uh, far better than on the black market, the UK will start to expedite the legalization of recreational cannabis. Uh, on the regulatory side, one of the things, of course, about bringing it into the market legally, of course, is you have better control over quality. From your experience in the market to date, how difficult is it to get the quality that's needed to ensure safe use? Yeah, it's a really important question. Um, first off, the UK and every other country that operates in the cannabis industry, every company has a responsibility to uh, have a l large amount of self-regulation. It's key, and we can talk about that in a second. But what's happening is good operators and good suppliers of cannabis are, are providing extensive lab reports. And then when a company like myself does get a, a shipment of, of, of cannabis, we're also then sending it to another lab. There's a self-regulation. So between the suppliers of the cannabis and between the operators of, of cannabis or the people who sell it in one form or another, there should be at least double checks on the, on, on the quality and the um, the integrity of it. Yeah, doesn't this push the price up though for the end user? Uh, because if you've got all these costs built in, then people are then driven back to the black market. Is that not one of the reasons as to why Canada's done it, to bring it into the legal sphere 
you can collect taxes amongst other mm. things and keep crime off the streets but if you're going to price it at a level which includes all these costs that makes it very difficult, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really true. And and the cost of cannabis has, has been going down over the uh, past few years. Um, you know, we've heard a gram of cannabis in Canada being produced for $7 to $10 to $4 to $3.50 by the time you put in labor and and, and, uh, and all the energy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that cost is going to go down as it becomes commoditized, as, as new uh, cultivation centers pop up in South America and Asia. Um, so the, the price will come down. Canada put a cap on it for um, for customers at $10 to $15 a gram. They couldn't sell it any for any more than that. This is for recreational purposes? This is for recreational okay, purposes. Fine. Um, and that was just to, again, make sure that it stays in the white market rather than the black market. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, let's talk about what you're doing here in the UK because it sounds very exciting. We just, uh, I, I teed you up at the beginning with a couple of things you're doing here. Just explain more about what, what it is you're doing and, and how you see your investments developing because a lot of people will be looking at this and thinking this looks like a new market to get involved with. Let's wait until the doors are open fully and then go for it. How do you work out the direction in which to go? Yeah, I guess the first thing we really did was we looked at the whole value chain from beginning to end. Um, I mentioned um, the, the, the speed at which the industry is going. Um, a profitable part of the value chain yesterday may not be a profitable part of the value chain today. So where are we today? Um, and then we made a really big decision on whether we wanted to be a farmer or whether we wanted to be really close to the customer. You know, my team, having worked in a, a, a the fast-moving consumer goods and the CPG space for so long, knew that we were good with customers. So that's where we chose to set up, was close to the customer. And what about the, the, the culture you're trying to build in this industry? Because uh, with a completely blank canvas, this is pretty much what we're at. What sort of image do you want to project? Yeah, well, we're, I think I believe that we're all pioneers in this industry. Whoever's really starting it now or over the last X number of years, we're pioneers. So I think we have a responsibility and accountability to really set the standards. I mean, um, you know, giving back a proportion of our proceeds to Planet, uh, making sure we have sustainable packaging, um, um, making sure a proportion of our proceeds go to people research. Um, you know, I mean, the sharing culture, I I personally and my company do not want any resentment. So it's important to reward people adequately, um, treat people well, um, um, do deals and err on, err on um, being uh, generous <laughs> rather than stingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, make everybody happy because again, a good name for you got to get a good name for yourself. Um, I think that's an important principle of this industry that we're trying to build. Yeah, at the moment, of course. I mean, being an early stage investor, I guess you're pretty much on it in your own. Uh, there are a couple of companies only li listed here in the London markets. Do you aim ultimately to do that sort of thing? Because I, I know in, in in Canada, I believe you own dispensaries. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is these are all possible vehicles to be listed uh, on the market to to supply these um, uh, drugs into the market. Is that how you see? things going what do you how do you see your future in the market do you want to list a company do you want to encourage investors privately well I mean the first thing is we we want to earn returns for our investors as quickly as possible um, a, a, a sophisticated investor said to me a few weeks ago that the only way you make really good returns is if is not through operations but through right exit or a listing yeah, yeah. and I disagree with that I think we should have you know we should be able to provide you know three to five multiple of returns on investor dollar um, you know I mean there there it's a good thing about this industry where there are a lot of opportunities to exit you know it's not just one industry that's looking to get into the cannabis game it could be retail it could be pharmaceuticals it could be tobacco companies it could be um, FMCG companies. I mean, so the options are abundant in terms of what you can, who you can exit with. But again, this industry right now, I'm not seeing a huge amount of fantastic operators, which is which is quite paradoxical. So good operators and good companies should be returning back at three to five. Yeah. Uh, in, in in funny in North America, you heard this ten to twenty multiple. Right. I mean, again, it's exits. It's, it's just exit, really. But, uh, I mean, operators shouldn't be, uh, you know, operators should not be able to return a 10 to 20 multiple on your yeah. investment. Uh, based on the experience of what's happening in Canada, do we expect this sort of thing to be heavy online? Or is it something you're going to have to see someone face to face to get things bricks and mortar type, uh, retail type business, which of course is actually relatively quite expensive. Um, is there much of an online business for this in Canada or is it face to face? Yeah, so it's really interesting. Um, that's a great question because we can break it into a few things. First off, um, since the United States is not 
federally um, legal that and Facebook and Google are American companies, they're bound by those um, federal laws. So they cannot advertise cannabis like they would a car, for example, um, or another product. So there's a huge amount of restrictions. So the typical way to go online is not valid for uh, the cannabis industry right now. It costs far too much to acquire customers online. You have to bring them to a, you have to get an influencer, then you have to drive them to a, another page, and then eventually you can drive them to an e-commerce site in order to make a transaction. So I don't think the e-commerce, the direct um, acquiring customers online is, is, is very viable. Then we can go to a marketplace strategy. Again, you look at a, a, a Amazon type. You can't advertise it as CBD. You have to say hemp product. Um, now, I know there's a lot of companies that are trying to make that play for uh, uh, cannabis marketplaces right now. Um, we decided not to because you know when Amazon does open the doors and it does become federally uh, federally okay for Amazon to um, make a play for the cannabis industry, they'll crush the competitors and it just cost too much to get those customers um, on your own little. Um, marketplaces to build. So uh, I'm not a massive fan of, of going online right now. Um, I think there's better ways to find, capture and, and keep customers happy. So are you just focused on the UK at the moment or is there an opportunity do you see for yourself going into other European markets? For us, um, and going back to that original statement of speed and focus, for us it's important to really focus on the UK market. I know other companies that are trying to expand all over Europe very quickly, but beware of that because um, uh, uh, countries are different um, regulatory-wise, um, political environments are different. Um, it really does stress, your, and stress and stretch your operations trying to get in too many places in a short period of time. Um, they may reflect that in their forecasts. Um, in terms of expansion into other countries, um, and good luck, but uh, for us, it's focus, focus, focus on the UK. Dave, we've got to leave it there, but thanks indeed for joining us. Uh, Dave Gibson is the Chief Executive of CanCrest.